Well, g'day everyone, how's it going? Coming at you from the studio today. Uh, listen, I did a video on a new RAID setup that I just put together, uh, the Thunder Bay 6, and it was a little bit all over the place. So I'm just coming in like a few days later as I'm in the edit and just gonna kind of, I'll, I'll jump in back and forward uh, as I put this video together. But I really think this is great if you're on a budget and you wanna get a direct attached storage system set up for your workflow. And this has worked out really well for me. So check it out. Just doing some upgrades at the moment with my RAID setup. And I wanted to take you through that and talk a little bit about some of the decisions I made and what product I've landed on. Um, yeah, I was running with a Promise Pegasus R4, which is a Thunderbolt 2 RAID. And that was beginning to run into some problems with Catalina uh, once I upgraded my Mac to Catalina. So it prompted me to uh, look at some other options, which were Thunderbolt 3, which is gonna give me a little bit more speed as well. And I just wanted to take you guys through it, um, what I, decisions I sort of came up with and how I made these decisions based on the work that I do and the video production stuff that I do. And yeah, hopefully you get some value out of this. I'll take you through setting up the new system and sort of from start to finish and the thinking behind the way I do my backups and the way I run everything. So let's get into this video. Running with this Pegasus and in RAID zero. So this is one, two, three, four two terabyte drive, so a total of eight terabytes, RAID zero. That was giving me speeds of around about 550 to 600 megabytes per second, read and write. So that was doing awesome for my editing. Uh, I was filling it up pretty quick, within about four months, three to four months, I was filling it up. So I was then recycling these. I'll show you this setup here, um, yeah, down in here. So the, this here is what I was using for backup, which is basically um, if this will focus for me, an eight terabyte Seagate. So eight terabyte Seagate drives, and I was just basically running uh, this system uh, and dumping everything onto this drive. That was my main editing drive. And then that was running uh, really fast for everything I was doing, editing 4K and 6K stuff with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera Raw. Then I was backing that up incrementally like every half an hour or as I dumped a whole lot of footage on it would then back up once this was finishing uh, finished dumping onto it would directly back up to this which is an eight terabyte usually this is just a different one from 2019 but would back up to this um, and then what would happen from there is uh, this would then go up to the cloud so this drive itself was connected to backblaze and that would then go up to backblaze through my computer so I'd leave my computer running overnight let that back up to backblaze. It would take sometimes, say if I dropped two terabytes of footage or a terabyte or something, a big project, it would take probably about two days, um, 48 hours maybe to back up um, to backblaze. So within a couple of days, I would have everything backed up in triplicate. And what I would do is I would, once I would dump everything onto the promise, then I would leave the, um, uh, let this back up, but I would leave the cards full. So I'd keep until this this had backed up in duplicate. I would leave my cards full if I was able to do that. Usually I was, and then I would let that back up after over a few hours. And normally I would do that on a concurrent day project. I would do that overnight. So this would be backing up overnight, and then in the morning I would check, make sure that it had backed up in duplicate, and that this was already backing up to backblaze, and then I would be able to uh, delete the cards or reformat the cards for the next one. So that was kind of my way of doing it for the first, uh, probably the last two years. Um, the Promise was doing really well for me. Thunderbolt 2, um, I had a Thunderbolt 2 laptop at the time, but since I upgraded to Catalina, so something happened in that upgrade where this began to drop a drive and it was really frustrating because none of the drives would go dead, but it would just lose a drive and this would go red. And then I'd have to use terminal and this kind of um, back end command to bring that drive back online. And then it had problems with syncing up with the Thunderbolt cable and getting it back online. Sometimes like one time it took, you know, 15 minutes to get it back online. Another time it took me like three hours. So that kind of downtime from editing just wasn't sustainable. So that's why um, basically, even though this is still running and it's still all good and I still trust it, um, it hasn't ever made a drive go dead or anything like that, even with power outages and power failure, hasn't been a problem. But now it's just time that I upgrade to something that's more reliable. So the choice I've gone with is this one here, the RAID 
Thunder Bay 6 from Otherworld Computing. And basically, I've landed on this because... If I just get some focus on there... Now, the reason I've landed on this is because at the moment, although I may benefit from having a NAS, the cost associated with going up from something like this to like a 10 gigabit Ethernet NAS with Thunderbolt 3 was just too prohibitive at the moment. And so um, the also the cost of the drives and everything, um, there was a reason I didn't really need to go for like a massive capacity. So this is 8 terabytes. So this has been running really well. This has kind of been... I've kind of been filling this up in about three to four months and then recycling. Uh, and then most of my client work that's done, I can move off this onto just a single backup drive. So I don't really have clients who pay me to store their footage, but I do keep a copy of everything on one hard drive. So if that does go down, it's not going to be commercially a problem. But anyway, so all of that to say that this now with six bays um, is going to be plenty for me. And also what I've got is this guy, uh, this is not actually the one because I actually end up getting another one, but I've got a one terabyte NVMe that is go that goes in the back of this. So let me take you around to the back and show you what the back of it looks like. So here's the back of the Thunder Bay 6. Uh, it's got the little um, Kensington um, lock. It's got two Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is daisy chain, and you can daisy chain up to six of these. So I also thought that the price point of this was really good. This was actually a refurbed or um, a resupply model. So it was a little bit cheaper, probably about 400 US dollars. So I thought with a daisy chain, I can add another six and another six later and keep those speeds uh, and keep stocking up on the drives that I use. So I can add another 12 terabytes for around about you know, 1600 14 to $1,600. So $1,600 max. So that's not a bad um, addition to this. Um, and so, so that was my thinking around having this drive. Um, also, it's got the um, uh, display port. So I can run a monitor, 4K monitor off this easy peasy. I like that it's got a physical switch. So one thing about the Promise is the Promise didn't have a physical switch. There was an off button at the front here. But when you plug it in, as soon as you plug it in, it fires up. So I didn't like that. I wanted it to be able, I wanted to be able to plug it in and then switch it on physical switch. So when I'm recording as well, I can turn this switch off if the fan noise is bad while I'm recording. So this is kind of why I've landed on Thunderbolt 6. And inside here, there's two little screws here. Inside, you can put a slot of NVMe. So I've got one single slot just as a one terabyte scratch disk on this drive. So that's enough information about what I do. So oh, this also is gonna be now 12 terabytes, but I might run this now in RAID 5. So my RAID 5 speeds, I think is gonna be about 800 uh, read speed. Uh, yeah, 800 read, I think it is, and 800 read and 450 write speed with RAID 5. So whereas this one I couldn't run in RAID 5 because there's only four drives and I would lose too much capacity and too much speed. Now I think I can run this in RAID 5. I'm still gonna have another 12 terabyte similar to this, but in a different drive, a faster drive, a 7200 RPM drive that will run my backups. So I will basically have the same scenario, but in RAID 5. Now what, what that means is if one of these six drives go down, then I can replace that drive and get back online within hours. So because there are only two terabytes, about drivers are going to come up online pretty quick and it's going to recopy and reconfigure very quickly so that's going to keep me up and running if one drive was to go if two drives were to go due to power failure or something then i would have it all backed up anyway and then the back blaze just becomes like a fail safe and a, and a, and a final stage of backup which i'll continue to have uh, the whole uh, backup drive backed up to back blaze but then i don't really need to worry as much because everything is going to be uh, you know, pretty safe in RAID 5 on this unit. Whereas in this, it was a little bit more sketchy. If I lost, you know, um, potentially I could have lost 15 or 20 minutes of work or I could have lost the previous dump if it had gone down and a drive had have died uh, and I couldn't bring it back online then, and it hadn't had time to back up to my backup drive. But in that case, I would have had the recording media anyway, like the cards from the camera with the footage on it. So it would have been sweet. But anyway, 
just to say that that's the reason why I'm going from this drive now to this one, RAID 5. Hopefully that's going to give me the speeds I need to still record and do everything in uh, 6K that I do on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And anything that comes out with the R5 or RED footage we shoot uh, can go on this. And I can, I can also hopefully get the speeds I need to do 8K and things like that. So anyway, that's a lot of information to take you through, but just to give you context on why I'm upgrading. And then, you know, with 12 terabytes, that might do me for around about um, six months. Who knows? I'm shooting a lot of Blackmagic Pocket Cinema stuff and doing, you know, um, corporate videos, events, you know, that can blow out to a terabyte or two of footage for, you know, per event that we do or per shoot that we do. If it's a week long shoot, that might be a couple of terabytes of footage. So in that case, that really won't be enough but I can scale it up by upgrading drives to bigger drives or I can get another unit and then just daisy chain it. So there is that redundancy there if we need to go upgrade. Now, in terms of the price, before I actually get into putting drives and everything, uh, the price point for this is pretty good because what I'll have to do in six months time is just upgrade uh, the actual backup drive and then I'll just archive the backup drive that is will be currently connected to this. So that means that I can continue to upgrade the backup drives, continue to archive backup drives, and then just keep this pretty fresh, keep upgrading it, um, keep you know clearing the footage off it and just keep using it as my main RAID. And that's kind of what I'm planning to do with it. And I guess the good thing about that is about the backup drive, the 12 terabyte drive that I'm getting for this is the Western Digital. It's actually one that's for an Xbox and it's 12 terabytes and it's 7200 rpm so it's quite fast as well as, as far as backup drives go and that will actually only set me back about 500 aussie dollars so maybe about 400 us dollars that means i can have that every six months and you know if i'm doing 20 30 40 dollars of video then that's going to be 500 dollars every you know 40 thousand dollars ish of video so it's not a big investment in terms of keeping that footage and backing things up properly. So it's really worthwhile to continue to do it that way. And when I need to go up to four terabyte drives, you know, to double the capacity to 24 terabytes, I can easily do that uh, with a couple of thousand dollars of new drives. So, you know, I can do that in a year's time or in 12 months or 18 months time or maybe two years time when I need to, I can go that way as well. So I'm just jumping back in here to say that I've decided to split this video up into parts. So that is gonna be the end of part one of this video. Hopefully you got some value out of understanding my backup system, the reasons why I put it together this way. Uh, the next video is gonna be about uh, loading in all the drives and setting up the system with Soft RAID, which is uh, OWC's kind of proprietary software that runs the RAID system. So this is a software RAID. So all the hardware is in the actual unit itself, but then it runs through software on the computer. So that's how the RAID is formed and set up and managed. So I'll show you how to set all that up in part two. And then in part three, I'm gonna just do some read and write speed tests of different configurations. So part two and three of this, I'll unpack where I landed with the RAID setup that I went with. And you'll see that I wanted to go with RAID 5 and that didn't actually eventuate. So I'll show you the reasons why that happened. So hopefully got value out of this first one and, and how I do my backups. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.